So this car has been sitting here for over two years and we're finally gonna do something with it. This whole side was hit before. Yeah, that's all clear coat. And this is the guy that did it cheaper. They even use speaker wire to wire in lighting, but the lights are staying on. They're not, they won't turn off. Wow. It won't go to neutral. Hey! <laughs> Nothing ever goes according to plan. So I'm taking the tarp off because the window, I broke it when I was cutting the grass one time. So we just have it covered. I'm gonna take all this off because it's tied to the wheels. I'm so surprised that the glass didn't fall in all the way, especially because it's been broken for over a year. But before I deal with that, I wanna move the car over to the concrete in front of the shop so that way we can remove the rest of the broken glass and also clean up the car. Trust me, it needs a good clean. The car does not run right now because missing quite a few things, which we will discover later. But lucky for us, it's mostly downhill to the shop driveway. Just look at all that dirt that has accumulated over the past few years under the car. Now, before I become spray happy, I wanted to look over the car and just get an idea of the condition of everything. There were multiple wasp nests as well as various other critters all over the car. And I also noticed some of the engine components missing and even some open connectors. But let's just start out by replacing the window so we can pull off that pressure washer. A couple of days ago, I visited a local parts yard and bought a window glass off of another convertible since the coupe glasses are different. Now the replacement is very easy, but cleaning up all of this broken glass, now that's no fun, but we got it done. Now it's finally time for my favorite part, pressure washing. I even jacked the car up so I can pressure wash under it and get rid of most of those spider webs. Hopefully this keeps us from getting bit later on. Look at all that. That's all clear coat, he said. Once you started pressure washing, it just started peeling, huh? And it's only an electric pressure washer, so I mean, this is what I use on all the cars. So it's just, this whole side was hit before and somebody fixed it and this is the guy that did it cheaper. Paint job special. I just hit it with a little bit. All this is already cleared off. Which I actually, I'm actually pretty glad that it's this easy to take the clear coat off. That way we can actually fix it properly. Sometimes you just gotta work smarter rather than harder. There's no way that Selena and I could have pushed this car all the way up that ramp. So we had to use the truck. It's been about four years since I've owned this M3. I originally bought it because I took out the rear end to use in my LS3 E46. And we actually started parting this out after you took the rear end out. Yeah, we were hesitant, but yeah. we parted some stuff out. Yeah, well, I, mean, I didn't. Somebody did. Well, I mean, it's a salvage title and it has a lot of cosmetic issues. When they repaired it originally, because it was a running and driving car when we got it. Mm -hmm. When they repaired it, they just didn't do a good job. There's a lot of stuff that added up back then. And I was like, it just made more sense to part it out because we were originally going to use this S54 for our E30 build. But the whole point of this video is to get it back and running because with the M3 prices nowadays, <laughs> why not? And we never had a convertible, so. Yeah, I'm excited to see if we like the convertible life or not, especially the good weather is about to come back in fall. So it should be a perfect cruiser. So let's try to put this thing back together as quickly and as efficiently as we can, just like we did with our E36 M3 last year. But first, let's check it out. Let's see what <laughs> parts he took off back then. <laughs> I, I took off quite a few things. I don't even remember everything. So the big thing that you could see right now is the red hood. <laughs> so this is the first thing that sold. It didn't have the original hood, so good thing we didn't sell the original know, hood. Right? But Because those original hoods, they're so hard to find. And original hoods are actually aluminum. The hood that came with this car was like, was fiberglass, right? It was some aftermarket hood. Yeah. This one is actually not an M3 hood no. either, but. We've got one. All done, now time to drive back home. So while we are at my friend's place getting the M3 hood from his parts car, we also picked up a few other things that I know we needed. So yeah, let's look at all the missing parts. So as we can see, the headlight trim was sewed, the bumper is barely holding <laughs> on. Yeah, that's and not our fault, that's just how it was. And then we have this lip, you can literally see the screws right there. <laughs> so yeah, probably not the best lip or fog lights. <laughs> And inside, we're missing a few things. We're missing some cooling system stuff. We're missing some engine components as well. And it's just dusty and crusty. Wonder who cut some stuff in here too. <laughs> I 
Okay, we needed it for a customer car back in LA. Let's keep going, there's a lot more to see. <laughs> so this car was actually salvaged because of a wreck on this side. And before we got it, it was already fully repaired, just not repaired well. And we noticed that when we pressure washed it, all the clear coats started peeling off as well. The door doesn't close all the way. All this stuff can be repairable, so I'm not too worried, but originally we didn't think it was a good idea. Now inside, I did start disassembly because I did sell a few things and a lot of the modules were removed. I also used this car to troubleshoot other cars, so that's why we might still have a lot of these modules. Now another main reason we decided to part the car originally was because of this top. This top was already in horrible condition. It's got a gash in here as well, and it's just deteriorating all over. We never really thought this would be a wise candidate for restoration back then. But like I said, with the price changing, yep. our minds are changing. Exactly. <laughs> just kidding. So the rear end that's currently on the car is from Selena's E46 sedan, the original 325i rear end. But we do have this spare E46 M3 rear end that also needs some work that, that we need to do before we could put it back in. And also the exhaust is completely removed, so only the headers are on there. There's no exhaust system and a few other plastics and pieces all along there that are missing. So I think we've got our work cut out ahead of us. Let's just get right to it. So let's start out with the big item that's just an eyesore on this <laughs> car, to be honest, the red hood. Let's take it off. We'll leave it hoodless for now until we do everything in the engine bay. It'll be easier to film as well. So let's get to it. Yeah. So a quick tip, if anybody's ever removing a hood, just so you can save yourself some headache, put something in between the windshield and the hood. Because if that hood slips at all, you're going to crack your windshield. Lift it out. So the S54 is known for its high revving capabilities and the Vanos has a lot to do with it. This right here is a Vanos solenoid and a solenoid block and it's actually missing from our convertible engine mainly because I had taken it off for a customer car. Now this is a spare Vanos assembly that I had and I'm not sure if it's good or not but we're just going to clean it up, replace some of the O-rings and just go from there and hopefully this works. So I got the Vanos reinstalled, and as I was installing that, I noticed we're missing a bunch of stuff. A bunch of screws, bolts, the heater valve, a couple of connectors and stuff like that. And we also have a bunch of stuff that's missing inside. So Selena's gonna tackle the inside while I figure out the engine bay. So hopefully we're able to get the car to start soon. So this is the situation in here. As you can see, there's a lot of little parts everywhere. And back here, <laughs> there's a crock pot apparently. So I'm guessing this is stuff that when we moved, we just put in here. Uh, so it'll be fun to check out what's in there. I wonder if that's a real crock pot in there. It is. I you think, think so? You know, the funny thing is I actually removed that back seat to remove the fuel pump. So you're telling me I put all that stuff back in there? It is a crock pot. So most of this stuff is all interior stuff. We've got a couple of things that we can use. I found some screws, but that's about it. I don't think it's really gonna help us make the car run yet, so we're just gonna try to figure out everything else. So I'm already seeing one major issue that I hate. There's a bunch of wiring all over the car, in the engine bay, on the inside, all aftermarket stuff. They even use speaker wire to wire in lighting stuff. I don't know why they did that. But I've got a lot of this stuff removed. I'm gonna have to put a heater valve. Fun fact, you know how much a heater valve cost on an E46 M3? An OEM heater valve costs around 400 bucks. That's ridiculous. And you can't use the non-M heater valves because they have, uh, the E46 M3 has a secondary pump on their heater valves. But we're just gonna use a non-M one for right now to see if we can just 
stop the coolant from leaking out, and we're gonna proceed on getting the car to run. Here's a non-M. On the M, there's two connectors, one for the auxiliary pump. So that's all we're gonna plug in and just plug these hoses in so that way we don't have a coolant leak. Oh, we're gonna have to find hose clamps too. What do I do with those? All right, so I've got the ignition switch hooked back up. Now it actually works. Um, everything else is, for the most part, good. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put another battery in here, and then we're gonna see if we can get this top down, and then I think we should be able to start it, but we're about to find out. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, it's got power. So the power's on. We don't have the fuel pump hooked up, so it's not gonna turn on all the way. But I really wanna open up this top and see if it's working, and it gives me more space and light to work in here. Right now it's blinking red. It could also be because that window regulator is not hooked up, but let's see. It's making like a clicking noise, but nothing's happening. Maybe if I hold it, maybe the doors need to be closed. Nothing. Nothing. Turns out it was actually the convertible storage compartment in the trunk. So I did all of that other stuff for nothing. Sounds crunchy. Help it go down, maybe? Or not. <laughs> we have a convertible. We have a convertible. Wow. Can you believe it's been sitting for like four years since the last time any of this worked. Last time it had any power. And it just, just like that. Gotta love BMWs. But now I gotta figure out why the lights are staying on. Everything's plugged in, but the lights are staying on. They're not, they won't turn off. It's a love and, it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> Look at all those wasps. All right, so I know the car's not gonna turn on all the way because the fuel pump's not hooked up, but I wanna at least get some of the fluids moving, make sure it's cranking and stuff, because I already see that there's some wiring issues going on with the light staying on and stuff. So let's see if we can get it to crank.
So I got the oil pressure light to turn off, which means that it built up oil pressure. That means the oil should be flowing through everywhere. Um, it's probably still needs a little bit more cranking, but I think I'm gonna go and replace the fuel pump, just leave it disconnected, and then we'll crank it some more. So I figured out why the door is not closing all the way. This latch is super, super loose. So I'm gonna tighten it up, and I also think that this glass isn't aligned properly, the driver's side, so it's hitting this back glass and it's not letting it close all the way. So I'm just gonna tighten this up. I already dropped this glass down, and let's see if it closes. Cause that's a big factor if we're gonna be keeping this car or not. If that door doesn't close all the way and it looks really bad, obviously it just makes more sense to part it out. <laughs> really, that's all it was? Oh my God. This whole time, I thought there was an issue with like the panel gaps or the quarter panel not being fixed properly once it was salvaged, but this whole time it was just that latch. Sometimes it's the little things. I bet once you put up that back window, you're gonna see why. <laughs> Should we try? Let's see. I mean, I can adjust the curvature of this glass by taking off some of the, or either take the door panel off or the trim, and then I can adjust how it sits like this. Let's see. That's probably just from not being turned on and moved in a while. All right, ready? Oof. Is it, how's the gap? Gap's good? Yep. All right, let's close this window all the way, see what happens. It's good. Let's see if I open it. Oh, you what? see how much it was pushing it? Yeah, the curvature's off. And the curvature pushes that top. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to adjust that. So this is how it's gonna be? Hmm. It's too hot for this right now though, still outside. But in the fall, in the winter, when it's like 60, 70 degrees, I could see myself driving this. Now we just gotta get some coilovers on here, slam it to the ground, repaint it. Oh, there's still a lot left to do. We got the new new. Let's see what happens. I'm going to prime it a few times. All right. It poured out the ground. It poured out on the ground. What? The gas. Really? Yeah. Don't tell me we messed with the gas tank. I know. When we were trying to figure out for my car. I think so. I see a bunch of gas on the ground. Let's lift it up. Oh dang, it's really coming out. Holy <laughs> There's a huge puddle. That's a lot. That's the whole tank. I see the problem. That's the whole tank. It's hey, just the hose clamp. It's not even on there. Now I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna get that one out. All right, I got all the hose clamps and everything tightened up. Let's see what it does this time. I hear the fuel priming more.
It runs. Even on that old gas. Wow. Honestly, I'm speechless. It's like every time we do this, we've done this so many times in the past few months that it still gets me every time. I can't believe these cars still run. They just turn on and they just work. It's, can't believe it. Now that the car is running, we gotta get it to drive. So the rear end that's in here is out of Selena's 325i, and we had just put it on there so the car would still roll. But we've got another E46 M3 rear end that's down there. We don't know if it's good or not. I know it needs axles, so we're gonna replace all of that stuff. But for now, we're just gonna pull off the 325 rear end and then put that M3 one in and see what happens. Now this should be pretty straightforward since there's nothing else attached. There's no exhaust, there's no drive shaft, none of that. So we're just gonna drop it, put the new one on, and then reassemble from there. So it turns out I never tightened any of this stuff. It was all loose, so it should be pretty easy to just pull it right out. As always, when you're working on cars, nothing ever goes according to plan. And that's the case with these axles on this car. So I've spent over seven hours trying to remove the axles. They were just seized into the hubs really, really bad. I know this rear end came out of an East Coast car for the most part, but it was just a nightmare. I finally got both of the axles out and I even got the passenger side, the new one put in. So just like I said in the beginning of this video, the theme of this car is to get it back on the road as quickly and cheaply as possible. So I actually went with some part store axles. I'm not sure how they're gonna hold up, if they're gonna even last that long, but it's gonna get us going for the time being. Both sides only came out to like 250 bucks. That's pretty much how much it would cost just to get one remanufactured OEM axle. So I just went with some O'Reilly axles. We'll see how they hold up and I'll keep you guys posted. I put some anti-seize on the new axles. Hopefully that stops it from getting seized onto the hubs um, because I didn't change the wheel bearings or anything. Obviously, if this was a real job, I would change all of that. Um, but like I said, we're just trying to save some money and try to get this car on the road. We're not even sure if that differential is any good. So we're gonna find all that out here soon. Let me just finish putting the axles in and then we'll go from there. This exhaust came off of my S54 sedan, and in order for me to make it fit the E46 M3, I had to take off the muffler, because the muffler mount sections are completely different between the sedan and the coupe. Once I had the rear end assembled, I bled the brakes and changed out all the brake fluid for all of the calipers. Now 
now since the inside was pretty dusty I decided to just quickly wipe it down and I was right it was really dusty but in the future we'll definitely do a better interior detail. Can't go nowhere without the tunes. <laughs> so we gotta get the radio. I think we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything else. We're just gonna take it for a spin. So we're not even gonna put this door panel on. None of that. Yeah, we're just so excited. And we wanna take the dogs out. We're gonna take it out to fill up gas, and then we're really gonna take it out to go to the gym. Yeah. Today is like the only day that is actually a nice breeze outside. It feels nice outside. So we gotta enjoy the convertible weather. Although, right now it's already 10:29 at night. It's fine. We just gotta bleed the cooling system. I'm not even changing the oil because I'm actually gonna try something. This is gonna be another one of our guinea pig cars. I'm gonna try the Liquid Molly engine flush on here since this engine's been sitting a while. The oil, the color looks good, but obviously the oil's old in there and we're not gonna be really stepping on it. We're not taking it to the track. Just get the fluid circulating and then we're gonna change all the fluids out when we pull it back in. And the next video, you also are gonna see us put on coilovers, and I think we're gonna try to put the, our F80 stock wheels on here and see if that works out. And if we don't like the F80 wheels, I still have those work three-piece wheels that I had on my first car. We made a whole video on it on, on this channel. I'm not sure if I wanna put those on here. We're gonna try the F80. If that doesn't work out, then we'll use those. Time to take off the Cali plates. Yep. We're gonna make this girl a South Carolinian. <laughs> <laughs> They're not gonna catch me riding dirty. Let's see, it's their first trip in the convertible. We got a little belt for them to secure them. Let's see how it works. We're not going too far. Why, puppy? All right, as long as they don't put their fingers on there. Fingers, <laughs> their paws. Good, Fluffy. Are you so excited, huh? Now, Kelly's a little bit more scared. Hopefully, she's okay, though. Let's sleep. All right, let's go. Let's go. Station. <laughs> I need to turn the heater on. <laughs> what puppy? They love it. They love smelling that air, right, boy? What's going on? I'm trying to see if the heater works. That means that the cooling system is bled if the heater works. What was that? <laughs> that was a little pop. Hi, puppy. Now the dogs are back home, so now let's go to the gym and drive it for real. <laughs> I'm nervous because the dip was already making noise when we were just going to the gas station. Oh man. Let's see what happens. At least the cooling system seemed good, yeah, right? it's fine. I mean, the heater is already working, so I didn't really bleed it. I'll check the coolant level once we get to the gym, or like once we get out of the gym. Why is it going to neutral? It's going to neutral? It won't. It won't go to neutral. Let's see. Oh, there it is. I did in my car. I didn't have a muffler on it, and 
This is exactly how it sounded. I cannot believe it. This is the first time this car has ever been driven. The yeah. first time that we've ever been in a, in a convertible for this long. Yeah. I, I actually like it with the top down. And I know I'm gonna hate it with the top up because all the rattles and all that. But the top down, like in this weather is actually really nice right now. It feels awesome. But yeah, let's go to the gym and hopefully everything is good when we get back. Should we close the top? Yeah. Oh, 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 crunchy. Crunchy. So you can only close it when it's on? Like when the car's on? Like in, I think in accessory mode too. Oh. But you can close all the windows with one button. Oh, that's cool. I think. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm really crossing my fingers that you guys can hear us. I know, right? All right, let's turn them off. Them too. All right, we're out of the gym. Now he's just double checking that nothing's leaking. Looks good. Looks good? Yeah, the coolant light had came on. So I'm about to check the coolant. But it's still pretty hot. Yeah, everything's looking good. Yeah, it's too hot. Eh, we'll make it home. Yep. At least it looks a lot better with the black hood instead of the oh, red. Right. <laughs> that kind of matches the top if the top wasn't so crusty. Oh yeah, true. I wonder if it has remote start because it's got all of this. Should we experiment? Maybe at home. <laughs> be just that Vanos, uh, the pack, the solenoid pack, connector, because the connector was broken. And I forgot to zip tie it. But as long as it makes it home, we'll solve that tomorrow. like that we've got another BMW back on the road now this car is far from ready for the road trip that we have planned for it so come back next time where we install a few mods and get it ready